everyone. My name is Hayden Winter, and it is my pleasure to be one of your TAs this quarter. Uh, me and Sarah Bartlett are here recording labs to show you what these procedures are going to look like actually done here in the hood. Uh, so please follow along with your procedures so that you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, filtration and purification of adipic acid. Um, so, uh, pure adipic acid is a fluffy white solid which looks a lot like this. Um, we are going to take an impure sample of adipic acid, which looks like this, and extract out the adipic acid while removing everything else. Now, what we have to remove here is uh, an insoluble uh, impurity, which is sand or mica, um, and that is not going to dissolve in our methanol today. Uh, the more tricky impurity to remove is benzophenone, which is a uh, molecule that has similar solubility um, to adipic acid in methanol, and we're going to remove that by recrystallization, but more on that later. So to start, I'm gonna dissolve everything I can in my pre-weight sample here into methanol. So let's go ahead and toss this into my container. And I've got some methanol here, which I'm going to measure out 10 milliliters of. sure you know, um, when we heat up the methanol, it is going to better dissolve that adipic acid. And so by heating this up to a reflux, we can make sure that uh, when we filter this, all of the adipic acid will fall through the filter along with the methanol. Um, I've got little bits and chunks of sand on the side of my glass here, and uh, that is going to be left behind because no matter how much I heat this up, um, that is not going to dissolve in this methanol. Um, so while that's heating up, I'm going to fold a filter paper, and those of you who uh, make coffee are going to be very familiar with this procedure. I'm just gonna do a little quad fold here. And by folding it into a quarter like this and just pulling away one of the lips, I get a nice closed uh, funnel that I can use a little bit later. A little springy. this swirls every once in a while, try to dissolve any adipic acid which may have stuck to the walls of the flask. And what I'm looking for here um, to make sure that this methanol is as hot as it can be is I'm looking for reflux conditions. Now reflux is often uh, used interchangeably with boiling and that's not always true. Um, what I'm looking for, for the bare minimum of reflux is I would like to see vapors rising up this Erlenmeyer flask, collecting on the cold walls of the flask up here and dripping down and running down as drops, which I should see fairly quickly. And uh, let me check the camera. Maybe you guys are able to see that, but I am seeing these drops running down the side of the flask. Uh, so I'm at a comfortable reflux here. And 
I'm gonna let it heat just for a second just to make sure that we're absolutely as hot as we can be. Um, you might have noticed how quickly this happened. Uh, just because I have this hot plate on 135 degrees Celsius, which is far above the boiling point of uh, methanol. And on top of that, um, compared to water, which you're probably more used to, methanol has a very, very low specific heat. So it takes less energy to increase the temperature of methanol and it happens much quicker this way. All right, I'm super comfy with this reflux. Um, I'm gonna start preparing my uh, funnel so that I can filter out this sand. So right now you can see that my paper is popping out of this funnel. I can stick the paper down to the funnel by just wetting it down with a little bit of methanol. And I'm gonna use a separate container to do this because some methanol is gonna run through and I don't want a bunch of just excess methanol um, in my filtration. All right, we're gonna let that run through for a moment. All right, it is nicely stuck down to the funnel. And now I can run my hot mixture through it in portions. And that portions is key because I want to keep this methanol and tinnitic acid mixture as hot as I can while it's being filtered. If this mixture cools down too much while it's filtering, then that atypic acid could no longer be soluble. It could fall out of solution and it could get caught in my paper or somewhere other than my collection flask where I want it. So I'm waiting for that to drip through. So it's almost entirely dripped through over in my funnel. I'm gonna take this reheated mixture over here and I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the rest. And now I'm gonna do one last step. So you can see there's a lot of solids that are still stuck up on the walls of this glass. Almost all of that, I promise you, is sand and mica. Uh, but there might be a little bit of intubic acid still in there. So I'm going to take another 5 mils of methanol. And I'm going to add it to this. And give it a swirl and a heat. And in a very similar procedure to what I've been doing so far, capture any more intubic acid which is trapped in that sand. And like I said, uh, methanol heats up very quickly. I'm already starting to see some little uh, drops of methanol falling down the sides of this glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that through my filter as well. The trickier impurity is the benzophenone. 
because it has similar solubility to the adipic acid that we actually want to collect. And this is where recrystallization comes in. So in recrystallization, um, what we are going to do is we're going to heat up this extract down here, and this is methanol and mostly adipic acid and a little bit of benzophenone. Um, we're going to heat that back up to a reflux, and then we're going to cool it down really, really slowly. Now, when we cool it down, uh, the adipic acid and the benzophenone are going to become less soluble. And if we give this enough time, the adipic acid will start to form little crystals upon itself, which is thermodynamically uh, favorable to forming a big mixed messy solid. So if we cool this down slow enough, the adipic acid will crystallize onto itself into a very neat lattice. Uh, and it will actually exclude out the benzophenone, which doesn't fit in that lattice. And the benzophenone will actually just sit in the methanol the entire time and will be left with a very pure solid adipic acid. So that's about as patient as I am today. Might be one more drip in here, but let's roll with it. I'm gonna start heating this back up to a reflux. this way instead of slamming it down here and uh, doing what would be called shock cooling the system, which forms a less pure precipitate. Um, so this cooling step in air is going to take about uh, 15 minutes, I guess, to cool down to room temperature. And then at that time, hopefully I'll see some crystals growing. Um, so I'll let those crystals grow for another 10 minutes or so maybe. Um, and finally, to make sure I'm getting all the dip gas out that I can, I will eventually transfer this to an ice bath. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have big, shiny crystals that we can observe at that time. Okay, we are back. Uh, so, since you've been gone, um, we had the recrystallization going at room temperature, about 15 minutes. Um, at that time, we started to see some solids form, um, but we saw many more solids form once we actually threw it into an ice bath for about five more minutes. Um, so here's the situation in the flask now. We have a fine white solid plastered around the inside of the container, um, and that is our adipic acid. In order to collect that, uh, we are going to use vacuum filtration, which is this setup right here. 
So here's my filter funnel, and this is called a Buchner funnel, uh, which has a cup for uh, sample collection and a bunch of holes which allow it to pull vacuum and liquid through those. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of filter paper and cover that up. I'm going to wet this down, same as the piece of filter paper earlier, and then I'm going to pass my liquid through this. And all of the solid that we've worked so hard to recrystallize so far is going to be trapped up on the filter paper so that I can collect it and get a melting point. So, um, the one thing to be specific about um, is that I'm using cold methanol and I'm keeping everything cold throughout this process. Um, these solids are going to dissolve in room temperature methanol. Um, so by keeping this cold and when I actually stick the paper down to the funnel with methanol, I'm going to keep that cold as well keep everything cold, the solids are less likely to dissolve and I get to collect them and they are my product. So uh, let's go ahead and start turning on the vacuum, start the noise, put on my filter paper, cold methanol, Then I'm going to swirl this to try to kick up as much as I can. And you can see how quickly all the liquid got sucked out of that. Um, so that's one major advantage of using vacuum filtration is it's so much faster than gravity filtration. On top of that, once all of the liquid's been removed, I can suck air through this solid for a long period of time and really dry it out and get a really dry, pure powder. Um, I'm gonna keep the air going for a little bit longer and I'm going to take a little bit of extra methanol and try to wash out the bottom of this container and collect everything that I can of my recrystallized solid. because that took about um, 30 seconds to dry. Uh, when you work with water, which we will later in the quarter, uh, that's gonna take something more like 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, so let's look at the product that we've got. This is a bright white powder, which looks very similar to our sample of pure adipic acid to compare to. You can see that all the color's gone. Um, and it's actually got a little twinkle. I'm not sure if I can capture that on camera. Um, when you properly recrystallize a solid, you get flat faces on those tiny crystals. And what that means is that uh, they reflect light better and they are shiny. So shiny, jagged crystals are a great indicator that your recrystallization has been successful. But in order to collect numbers on that, um, I'm going to go ahead and collect a melting point for you guys, uh, as well as a mass of the product so that we can assess uh, how much adipic acid was in the original sample. Um, so I'm going to go collect that for you guys. Hope you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll see you again in the next video.